Now we'll talk about estimating a derivative from a graph. If you're given a graph like you see here, and this is a graph of position versus time, and we're not given an equation, and we're not given any specific data points, just the picture of the graph, we can find the derivative or the slope at a particular point by using a tangent line. And so we're given this graph and here we're given some questions about it. Uh, these first few questions uh, relate to the graph but they're not actually derivatives but these should be pretty easy for you and you need to understand how to read a graph obviously. The first question is find the distance traveled from three seconds to six seconds. So we can see here at three seconds that's this point it's at a position of 30 meters and at six seconds right here that's this point it looks like it's at a position of about 65 meters so during that time interval it went from 30 up to about 65 meters so the distance it traveled during that time interval would be 35 meters so we'll just fill that in if you want to you could say 65 minus 30 is 35 meters and then we're told find the average velocity from 0 to 7 seconds. Okay, let's look at the graph. At 0 seconds, we're right here, and at 7 seconds, we're right there on the graph. So what we need to do is find the slope of this line segment from 0 to 7 seconds. Well, this corresponds to a run here. You can see clearly that's a 7 seconds for the run, and the rise that looks like it's at about 75 right there. So the rise goes from 30 to 75. That's a rise of about 45 meters, just based on the graph. So we're calculating delta x over delta t, which is our rise over our run. And that was 45 meters over 7 seconds. And we do the division, and that comes out to about 6.4 meters per second. And then we're told to find the average velocity from 6 seconds to 10 seconds. Okay, at 6 seconds, we're right here on the graph. And at 10 seconds, we're right there. So we need to connect those two, those two dots to find the slope of this line segment. And it's going down here. This little segment is decreasing. As time goes on, the x value is getting less. It's going from about 65 to 60. So our rise here is negative. Where it's, it's a negative 5 meter change in position. And the time interval you can see clearly from 6 to 10 seconds. It's a time interval of 4 seconds. So when we calculate the, the slope here, the delta x over delta t will be negative 5 meters over four seconds that comes out to negative 1.25 meters per second and the negative sign there means that on average during this time interval it was moving in the negative direction you can see during this time interval it moved from 65 up to about looks like around 77 or so and then back down to 60 so it was moving uh, forward part of the time and then backward but it moved backward further than it moved forward. So on average, there was more backward motion, which is why we end up with a negative number for the average velocity. Now we're told to find the instantaneous velocity of the object at t equals 2.5 seconds. So let's look at the graph. 2.5 seconds is about right here. So that would correspond to this point on the graph right there. We need to draw a tangent line at that point. Now you can sketch a tangent line. You can just kind of take your best guess and say, okay, a tangent line is going to be oh something like this or something like that. It's going to be a little easier if you put a straight edge or a ruler against the graph at that point. And here's a picture. You can see the curve here. And you can see the slope of the line is approximated here by the straight edge right there. And I'm putting the ruler up against the graph like that. It's still kind of tricky 
to see what would be a good tangent line. It's still kind of hard to get the exact angle right, and it's a little easier if you put the ruler on the other side of the point, like this. Notice I've got the point that I'm trying to find the tangent line to, and I can line the ruler up here, and I can see a little bit of the graph exposed on one side and a little bit of the graph exposed on the other. And it's actually fairly easy to sit the ruler there so that you can see an equal amount of the graph exposed on both sides. And when you do that, your, your ruler typically makes a pretty good approximation to the, the tangent line at that point. So take your graph on the actual page and do this now. Put a, put a ruler up against the graph and line it up like I showed you and draw the tangent line on there. And I'm doing that on screen right here. And so I got a tangent line something like that. That's a line tangent to the graph at that point. So the slope of that line will be the slope of this graph at that point. Or in other words, the derivative of the graph at that point. So I can calculate the slope of that line just by picking two points on the line. And I'll pick two that are easy to calculate. Uh, this one right here and this one over here. Because I can get the times very easily, 0 to 5. I know my run right there, my time interval, is 5 seconds. And let's figure out what the, um, what the rise is, the x interval. This looks like it's about 18. And over here, this looks like it's probably about, I'm going to say, 37. So from 18 to 37 is a rise of about 20, or, or 19. So we've got a rise of 19 in 5 seconds. So over here, the instantaneous velocity at that time, I'm going to say 19 meters divided by 5 seconds. And 19 divided by 5 comes out to 3.8 meters per second. And you might have something a little bit different. You might have drawn a tangent line just a little bit different or picked two different points or estimated the values over here a little bit differently and that's okay. The technique here is what's important. And you should have something pretty close to what I got. But the, the techniques and the concepts are more important than the exact answer. You should understand that the line tangent to the graph at that point has a slope and that is the slope of the graph at that point. And that's what we call the derivative at that point. Now we have one other question here. Find the instantaneous velocity at t equals 10 seconds. So let's look at the graph. At 10 seconds, that's this point right up here. So we need to draw a tangent line to the graph right up there. And again, you can place your ruler on the graph there. There's our point. And you want to place your ruler so you see an approximately the same amount of graph exposed on each side of that point. And that just helps you line the ruler up tangent to the graph. So I'm going to do that here. Get that lined up and draw in a tangent line. Now I just need to pick two points on that line and calculate the slope. And this can be one of the points. I'm going to pick that one right there. And I'll pick this one. Looks pretty convenient to use. So the time right here is clearly 10 seconds. And right here, it looks like it's about 11 and a half. And the positions are pretty easy to read for those. That's 60 and that's 40. Now notice that as time goes forward, this graph is falling. So the rise is negative. The slope of this line you should recognize is negative. And the velocity at that moment in time will be negative. This is a rise right here between these two points of negative 20 with a run of 1 and a half. So let's fill that in over here. This is negative 20 meters in 1 and a half seconds. And we just do the division on the calculator, and it comes out to negative 13.3 meters per second. That's the slope of the line tangent to the graph at that point. That's this line. And the slope of that line is the slope of the graph at that point. And so that would be the instantaneous velocity at that moment in time.